Okay, so I'm here for beach whiting and I've got some fat slobs of beach worms too. Woo! Slobs of beach worms. Look at that. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Whack that in a bit of sand. About one worm, I'll get about 10 baits out of that. Oh, look at that water. A little bit discoloured too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that, quickly change that water and put some fresh water in there. Normally when that happens, it's usually a worm that's broken and it's seeping out uh, blood and guts and so forth. So if you see that, I've put it in sand. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna put it in sand rather. And I'm digging down because I want that cooler sand. I don't want to. I don't want hot sand. Those worms in there. A bit more extra sand. Yeah. So if you're going to put sand on them, remember they're a cool southern creature. So don't put hot sand on top of them. All right. Now I'm also gonna put them in the shade a little bit as well. There you go, they're in the shade. All right. I've got my cloth. Don't leave our own home without one of these. Wipe down your hands from the gooey worm guts, uh, spiky fish. Yeah, so, got my Alvi set up today, and, all right, here we go. Oh, so good. So, a lot of the beaches don't produce worms like that. They're, they're a lot smaller, generally. Um, but you do, you do have some beaches that produce whopping massive worms. See that stuff's all over my hands there? It's easy, just wash, wash your hands down before you actually touch your reel and your rod. I think my sinker weight's a little bit on the heavy side as well. I'm not saying you won't get fish on it, but I like to have something that's lighter therefore it drifts more and looks more natural a lot of kelp out there about a 35 kilometer southerly blowing at the moment currents going from left to right winds going from right to left oh, here we go A little bit small. Ah, tiny little brim. It's like a Sydney Harbour brim on the sandbank. Actually, probably a bit bigger. <laughs> Not saying you don't get big ones, of course you do, you get plenty of big ones. Anyway, first bite. You heard me mention it many, many times. You see people toss the fish back into the ocean and they're tossing it from this height. And that's equivalent to throwing it from you falling out of a two-storey building, three-storey building. Be kind to the fish and make sure they land in the water. Oh, look at that beautiful worm. Oh, look at that. Woo. Smells a worm. I can see the weed pushing in. 
Oh, here we go. There you go. <laughs> I tell you what, this fish bought super, super timid. It's a nice brim. Very nice brim. Look at that. Lovely. Beautiful silver brim. Whoo! Wee. Beautiful brim. Fantastic. I reckon that would be in the vicinity of about 33 centimetres. That's in the bag, I reckon. So that brim bit like a stingray, very, very timid. Just started adding some weight on, weight on. Rod very slowly started loading up. But then the fight was much different. I'm gonna get rid of this one ounce sinker. It feels like I'm, losing, I'm using a, a house brick. Ah, feels a bit better. Here we go. Whoa! Woo! Good brim. Oh, good fish. <laughs> Looks like there's a school of good brim out there. Oh! This is so good. Is that a double header? No. Lovely brim. How good is that? Even bigger. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> That is a really good brim. Yeah, I reckon that's a 36, more than 36, I'd say 37. That's a cracking fish. So good. If you look closely, very closely there, it scoffed down both my baits as well. So I'll, I'll pick up that bit and I'll pick up that bit. And it's really messed up my rig. Beautiful brim, very nice. Three casts, one on the size fish, two beautiful brim. What a start. This is a good quality brim, eh? Wow, damn good brim. Okay, back out there. You know, you can judge by the amount of foam in that hole, how shallow it is. Several hours before dark, it's far from the right time of the day, but time's limited. The kelp's coming right into the hole now. Look at that, only in the last few minutes, the current's sped up. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, when you walk on most beaches, you'll find that there's a bit of kelp it's that frilly sort of vegetation. And if you fish amongst it, it's very annoying. It gets caught on your line. Because your line acts like a clothesline. And therefore, any weed that's floating around will catch on it. Look at this. Kelp. So this is not a fish, this is just kelp. So on the like here, you just gotta take your time, wash it up. So you see the kelp in the wave, 
and you go, well, am I going to have another shot out there? And you go, well, look, I think I may not. You might only need to move a few metres. So you've got like this weed here, that's the beach kelp, very common. This is like a, uh, like a reef kelp, uh, like a reef weed. That's like a ribbon weed. So that's three different types of weeds. Literally hell for anglers, mate. I mean, look at all that weed that I pulled up. Those three species, the kelp, the reef weed, it's like a reddy weed, and that green stringy stuff, which is like a ribbon weed. Pain in the ass. Unfortunately, that's the life of a beach fisherman. And Sydney is notorious for its kelp and weeds and so forth, so. All right. Let's just move down here a little bit. That's what a lot of anglers don't realise too. You should check your line. So I, I didn't show you, but I checked my line before. Because kelp is very abrasive. Weeds are very abrasive. It's rough. And as it's sliding down the line, uh, it can actually um, fray your line a little bit. It can damage your line. Some weeds, especially, can, like, especially like kelp, can be very abrasive to the line. Hello, what's going on here? Got a little bit of a rattle then. Oh, what have we got here? Another brim. Smaller fish, still the good fish, but. Not a bad brim. It's good. So back in the 80s when I used to work on a prawn trawler, you have, you know, the actual netting, right? And they had, uh, I was working on a prawn trawler and they also had nets for mullet, for the bull mullet. And the rings are about so round. So when you're pulling out the brim, so the brim are actually caught in the net, and as they're swimming, it's, it's wearing out the back part of their fin. Okay, so the, the actual dorsal fin. And then what's happening there is that it wears it out and it doesn't grow back. I think that that's what happens there. So you can see that clearly, that little bit of a gap. So that may have been caught from a, you know, caused from a net. So bring in, you know, your, your opinions and tell me what you think. But that's what I've, I've found. The smaller brim that I put, used to pull out of the nets when I used to work on the prawn trawler and used to work on the, on the uh, mullet boats as well, right? Um, that's what actually happens. So when you pulled out the small blackfish, uh, the brim, you know, that's what actually causes it. Anyway, come up with your own opinions. That fish is about 28 centimetres. I'm considering keeping that. I want a big feed of fish. So I might actually hang on to that fish. That 28, 29 centimetres. Well, that's four casts, five casts, sorry. One undersized brim, three brim, and one clump of kelp. Pretty good. Now I'm reaching towards the end of my first worm. So that was 10, 12 baits. Pretty good. You know, you can pile on lots more worm, but for the anglers that's 
well, you can pile on a lot more worm, but for the angler that's paying for their worms, it's not practical. So I'm going to go and scope out some more gutters, see if I can find some whiting as well. That'd be very nice. You know, initially that brim, the last one I got, it bit like a, I swear it was like a 20 centimetre whiting, 15 centimetre whiting, the way it went brr, 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 a bit super light. You know, so people ask me, how does a brim bite? Well, they bite in variable ways. They can slam the bait, they can, they can rattle on the bait, they can pick it up and drop it. They can pick it up, swim towards you and drop it. Here we go, look at this. Boom, 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 boom. we got here. Oh, good brim. Woo! Good fish. See how timid that fish was? See, you see how much, how much time it took to load up my rod? Very, very timid fish. And this is a good solid fish as well. Look at it. Going bit down with the backwash. You notice so I'm not running up and down the beach, I'm not running backwards, it's not necessary. You know, you don't have to make a, a spectacle of it really, it's not necessary. You can lower your tip down, you can raise your tip, you can let out line, especially with your alvey as well. Look at that solid fish. So I'm not having a go at anglers that run up and down the beach as they've hooked the fish, but you don't need to make a spectacle out of it. Just be calm, play out your fish calmly, lower your tip down when the, when the rod tip loads up too much, just to take the actual pressure off a little bit, and you'll be able to land your fish. Anyway, I'm gonna get some sand off that. It's a nice brim. That is a good brim. Beautiful. Whoo! It's, it's 35 centimetres easily. It's a good fish. In fact, let's just go back and measure it. Just quickly go and measure it. Oh, well, I wasn't very correct there. It was 33 and a half centimetres. 33 and a half. So, I mean, good fish. So I, I think the largest one's probably about 35 or 36, in my bucket. So any, any brim that's over 30 is a good fish. Sorry, I made a mistake. I've got that much, so that's the head of the worm. I've got that much worm left from my first worm. I've already used 12 baits. 12 baits. So I'm probably going to get about 15, 18 baits out of, a, out of one worm. Pretty good. So a lot of your worms that you catch aren't going to be that big. You know, that, that fat as well, you know, so. But don't take me wrong, I'm not putting on as much bait as what some people do, but I'm putting on a generous amount, you know, so. Wow, I am absolutely over the moon. Four beautiful brim. And I haven't been fishing for that long. <laughs> How good's that? Okay, let's get back out there. Ah, picked up a bit of kelp. Big chunk of kelp. Well, not a big chunk, but a decent chunk.
Ah, here we go. So you can see the rooting of it. You got torn off, or it just dies. You, you just get die-offs of kelp. And they just get old and they die and they get washed up with the current. Just to annoy anglers like me. <laughs> Here we go, I'm getting a bite already. Well, I got a rattle and then it stopped. You see how close I am to civilization? Oh, bugger. Shouldn't have missed that. Here we go. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Finally drawing towards the end of my first worm. My first worm. So, with those big worm heads, see that there? They're very tough. So I tend to sort of, you can snip it off with your fingernail, or you can use a pair of scissors. But those big worm heads, you might find that they don't produce as well, because they're quite tough. It's generally the bottom part of the worm that produces better, up to sort of, to within about 12 centimetres of the, uh, of the head. But that's the large worms. The small worms, they work fine. They're not as tough and as sinewy. Here we go. Feel the rattles. Very rattly fish. I got on here now. What have I got here? Small brim. No, a tarwine. A tubby tarwine. I mean, at the end of the day, they only grow up to about... If you get a one and a half kilo tarwine, it is an absolute friggin' monster. In fact, a one kilo tarwine is a good quality fish. That's like a 23 centimetre fish. Funny enough, that's legal. But I'm going to throw it back. Anyway, I'm going to move to another spot in search of uh, hope, hopefully some whiting but I'm quite happy about the brim that I got. Well I just moved about another 150 metres down beach and it's looking pretty good here. Oh here we go, look straight away nearly. Boom boom boom. Appears like the current's going the other way now. So this is a very shallow garter, it's probably only less than chest deep, between waist and chest deep, so it's very, very shallow. Ah. Went up the slack and I got a bit of a knock. Okay, I'm just gonna try down here. As soon as I landed on that cast here, brr, brr, just a small fish. That's, that swell looks like it's picking up too. Sort of um, around the metre mark now. Quite typical for southerlies to bring up the swell. Those guys are right in the middle of that good gutter. I was wondering where if I should have headed south or north. So that's the conundrum, see, there's a couple of guys just past me. 
and they're, uh, they're in a nice gutter there. And further south, it's full of weed. Well, there's a lot of weed, so... I'm going to have one fish in close after this, and then I'm going to move again. Damn weed. So I was getting consistent bites before, and when you stop getting bites, you, re you really appreciate the fact that you were getting bites before. So I'm gonna have one more shot. I'm just probing out. I wanna be thorough before I move. A lot of anglers have got greener pasture syndrome, and that, that means always looking for greener pastures. So just be thorough before you move. Scan out your hole properly. Oh, here you go, bit of a rattle. Small fish, but I think. Yeah, something quite small. Well, I found the whiting. <laughs> Yeah, so that gutter I'm fishing now is probably only about waist deep. Very, very shallow. A few rattles again. Boom, 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 boom. Small fish. Okay. Next size up, thank you, and I'll have a legal fish. You gotta be careful about going through too much bait too. It's very easy to go through a lot of bait with undersized whiting, under darts, all that sort of stuff, you know. Lots of tiny rattles. Might be a slightly better fish. Maybe not. Oh, it's, that's a better fish. It's a better fish. Oh yeah, good whiting. Woo, yes. Good whiting. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Isn't that funny? A tiny whiting, then this one, and then the second one. And that's the one you want. Beautiful fish, about 35 centimetres. That yeah, beautiful whiting, chunk of a whiting. Woo! Well, how good's that? Beautiful whiting, about 35 centimetres, caught in about that much water. Fantastic. And the, and the, tri and the tide's well and truly running out as well, a long way. There you go, it pays to be thorough, isn't it? I was about to move, in close, out wide, moved only a few metres to the right and the left and found one whiting. It might only be one fish, but... Can't go too far to the left because I've got a few anglers about 15 metres away from me, so... 
I want to give them space. Here we go, it's got a rattle. Ah, undersized whiting. Gunner's probably getting a little bit too shallow. So it's not as easy as just moving from gutter to gutter because you don't have the option of gutter to gutter sometimes. You've only got to choose what you've got, where you can fish because there's other anglers in, the, in all the other gutters, see? So if they're only tiny gutters, well, you haven't got much option, see? Here we go, here we go. Tiny little undersized fish. Uh. Oh, look at that right on the shore. <laughs> that, that was seriously. So there's, there's the whiting, and there's the shoreline. It was that close to the shore. <laughs> it's, it's a legal fish, it's 31 centimetres, say. It's actually not a bad whiting. All things considered, you know, so, I mean, it's not a big whiting, but it's, it's a reasonable white. It's, there you go. So I was just about to pack it in from here and move. That fish was seriously one and a half metres off the shore. I wound a 550 alvey about four or five times and the fish washed up on the shore. Incredible. Okay, so I'm going to go and get some more bait. I'm going to have another throw here. I think it's worth a throw. Well, there you go, two whiting and four brim. A bit of a rattle. Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it loaded up like a good whiting, but then it just didn't have the weight behind it. Okay, let's move. Just got to try and find somewhere else. Slowly but surely I've accumulated a feed. So trying another hole again. Options are slim, but you just got to try and fish any little cavity you can. Tide's well, as I said before, tide's well on the way out. Now it's really on the way out. Probably about half tide out now. A lot of kelp in this gutter. Oh, here we go. That was a good bite. Oh. What have we got here? Oh, good fish. Woo! Oh, yes! Woo! Oh, yes! Look at that! Stonka! <laughs> oh yeah, what a big whiting. <laughs> Look at that. Geez, it went hard too. How awesome is that? <laughs> what a surprise. Why, thank you very much.
Look at this again. Look at that. Right that brim, well, you can see two baits in its mouth. What a pig. It ate both the baits again. One beautiful, beautiful whitey. I'm going to just quickly just measure this up. Come over here. Let's just call it. So it's about 40 and a half, 40 and a half centimetres. Beautiful whiting. I mean, okay, I can hear you saying, I know you call bigger whiting, but I'm just saying for today, it's a good fish. Very nice fish. Well, that was friggin' fantastic. <laughs> Here we go. What's this? It's had a tiny little rattle. Oh! <laughs> oh, look at that. Chopper Taylor. That's what the Jewies will come into in the evening. It's heading towards sunset now, actually. Oh, it's chewing on my line too, the bugger. I'm going to have one or two more casts, and I think I'll call it quits, I think. I'm very satisfied with what I got. Three whiting, four brim, and I got a good feed. Well, that'll do me, I think. All right, let's go back and look at the fish. Actually, that whiting there, probably be 37 centimetres, actually be more than 35. That's 40. Beautiful, beautiful bag of fish. Nice bag of fish, mate. So there you go. Three beautiful whiting up to 40 centimetres and four brim up to roughly about 37, 38 centimetres. What a cracking bag of fish, really. I mean, Sydney beach fishing, pretty good. You know, I had to work hard for these fish. Live beach worms, caught me live beach worms, went out and fished about at least four or five gutters. All this gear will be in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll hopefully have another video coming soon. Cheers.